This is the Unearthing Art Podcast with Michelle Luminato and Beck Lee, where we dig into the messy reality of making art that matters, raw and real conversations about being an artist, navigating the creative process, and expressing our honest and sometimes weird selves. We're very excited this week. Michelle, because following on from your Artist Breakthrough Blueprint Coaching, which was a free event you did last week, we are going to be opening up Origin Art to welcome in some new artists who are interested in accelerating their growth in their practice and in their business. So if you're listening and you are interested to learn more about Origin Art, it's a wonderful community. We all support each other. We're all learning and growing, but also it's got a foundation of this three pillar framework that Michelle teaches, helping us, like I said, accelerate our growth and sign up to the link in the show notes, get on the list because that's the way that you can get more information about it, see what it's all about. And I believe that we're going to be open for new members for just this week only. Is that right, Michelle? Yes, yes. Origin Art is open for this week only. Join the wait list that's in the show notes and we hope to see you there. One of the things I think we've been really enjoying about Origin Art, Michelle, is it's given us an opportunity to really continue the conversations that we have here on the podcast and Definitely. we've been enjoying do a little bit of doing a little bit of extra conversation and extra content <laughs> within the community that we can talk about together. Um, one of the things that we recorded in the last couple of weeks and shared was you and I got together and did a walkthrough of my. Mm, I'm not sure what I. I'm not sure I have a name for it. It's it's a it's a big A3 kind of journal. Let's call it that. My art journal. It's something that I started when I first started working with you nearly 18 months ago now, going through this process with you and working through the framework that you teach in Origin Art. But the fun thing about doing that walkthrough, which we intended when we started to record, we said, we'll just do a quick 20 minute, show how my perspective and my lens, my way of seeing my art has changed over the time. We'll do a quick 20 minute recording. And as usual with us, 50 minutes 50 later, minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> a quick 50 minutes, but it is really fascinating to both have those conversations and therefore to get more perspective on what, um, how as an artist you're changing. I think that's an important thing about being part of a community is that we can share in that kind of safe group and really mirror and yeah. recognize what's going on for each other. So for me, doing that process opens up new perspectives as well, new kind of insight into where I've been and how much has changed. Yeah, and <clears throat> just I just want to give a little more context for the the people who aren't in origin art, just to give a better visual of what that looks like. So we were yeah. looking at things that Beck has looked at from the time she first entered my world, and then also looking at what she's recently really started refining with what her inspiration is all about and what really interests her, and comparing and contrasting that against each other, mostly just to really look at the growth and, and where where she's at now and what's been sort of let go of as well yeah, as left behind, yeah. really refined the vision for where you're going right now. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was really, it, it was beautiful to see for one because what I saw as a viewer was I could really see Beck in a really clear way this time that I couldn't necessarily see the first time and when anyone enters my world, there's a lot of probing, there's a lot of questions, and that's because I don't mm -hmm. always see the full picture. Sometimes as artists, we don't always see, you know, ourselves in a clear way. Totally, totally. And one of the kind of things you've been talking about recently in the group, which really has resonated for me, is learning to, um, and I may not get this phrasing right, so please jump in learning to see how we see. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Learning how to see how you see. Yeah. Is yeah. what I say. Yeah. So it's not l just learning how to look around you like an artist. It's not just a about learning to see, which I think is something that you know, comes up in art conversations. The fact that we, we should observe more carefully what's going on around us and not make assumptions about, um, you know, not let our brain kind of take shortcuts, but 
really examine and, and look more closely. That's one kind of seeing, but I love what you're doing. It's about what this whole process is about is being able to get a kind of distance that is difficult to do. It's difficult to it's like you're a fish in your own water yeah yeah it's difficult to recognize that how you view the world is actually very peculiar to you it's unique to you and if you can somehow get a little bit of distance from that and start to appreciate and understand what makes how you see the world you're seeing what's unique about that what's different what's what are the elements that really define that for you yeah I'm having trouble expressing it but it's really made an impact on me and I think that that's what starts to be exposed like when we did that recording when you look at my art journal where I stuck in studies like things that I've done paintings but also my sources of inspiration so things that I gathered from when I first met you because this is part of the process there's a gathering process and then we analyze what we've gathered together so that we can reflect back to each other within the community and you play a big part in that and providing that kind of visual feedback to us about what you're seeing and what we're gathering and so when I looked at what I had gathered when we first when I first started doing this framework and what I'd what I was putting in my art journal at that point in time, I realized that in retrospect, what I was doing was gathering things that kind of confirmed what I at that time thought I wanted my art to be about. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of um, boxes around that. Yeah. So it was limited by the art I was making at that time which was very landscape oriented and how I thought that basically I was entering into this process to refine that and do more of that but somehow make it better because it wasn't satisfying to me. So therefore my view of what I needed, of, of what I was gathering was very much around what looks like what I'm trying to make. This is gold. I love these conversations. Can I just ask a little more about that? So when yeah. you entered into this, you know, I'm working on landscapes because when I first met Beck, like I literally didn't know her at all. I mean, it's funny now because here we have a podcast, but I didn't know her. I didn't know what she had painted. I didn't know much about her. And so I can only make, um, you know, a knowing experience from talking to people and seeing what they're doing and bringing that in. So did you in your mind at that point feel like landscape was a huge influence in your art? Like, was that something that you felt was like a driving factor? I'm just curious. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I felt like in terms of what I thought I could express in art, I did have kind of an idea of a message that I could communicate in a way that would be palatable, let's palatable. say. Palatable, yes. Yeah, that would be attractive and palatable and that the way that I could do that was through these landscapes. So it was almost as though I'd landed on somewhat abstracted landscapes as a format that would enable me to kind of say a, a little bit just to have a bit of mm -hmm. a bit of a message a bit of of what I wanted to say about the world but also in a way that was <laughs> that was manageable uh -huh. that was that felt sort of familiar and doable if that makes sense listen it to these like words a bit of this <laughs> doable can you hear her like how pulled back she, yeah like really you know that's it was what all we very all do. conditional yeah, yeah yeah it's it's very conditional and I'm, I'm saying that because I remember feeling similar feelings and I was just curious because I never when I went through your journal in in both you know early then and now like had, had I ever in my mind processed that you would be a landscape painter or that you would be a contained <laughs> version of that like and I yeah. think this is the part that if we allow people to see us, you know, for for all of the pieces that we are, even if it looks a little blurry in the beginning because there's all mm. these filters around it, there's an essence there that we can feel and see that is somewhat undescribable 
And that's why as, as someone who coaches people, like sometimes I, I do find it frustrating that I can't describe what I'm feeling from you, but I'm like, there's mm -hmm. more here. What is yeah. this? And so um, sometimes I think it can look a little more palatable. I think that's a great word to describe what I feel happens to a lot of us. And I'm including myself in that, that my first intention with creating art was like, what can I do that's palatable, that's doable? Like all those same words that you just used. And it's it's funny because there's so much holding back that we do, you know, so mm. much reservation that we do when we have that point of view, you know, and knowing yeah. you now and knowing the work you're doing. I mean, it's incredible. And it's so powerful Absolutely. as well. I mean, I think that's yeah. the amazing part of when we actually can stop holding ourselves back. There's so much power in in who we can be and who we can actually become and that sometimes feels a bit scary i think growth can be totally. scary we've talked about like you know how unstable that can feel and beck has mm -hmm. said like i've had titanic moments where the ship is going down i don't even know i don't recognize myself you know and i think it gets a little messy sometimes but yeah. it's the growth that i've seen you have through this process is so exciting when you let the when you let the cat out of the bag you know that's a terrible mm. expression by the way when you really what, what was the cat doing in the bag anyway? <laughs> yes yeah. he was probably hiding from you um <laughs> <laughs> when you really let it out you can't contain it anymore like if i were to say mm -hmm. beck all right beck pack it all away everything that you've opened up now put it all away put it in a box that growth that you've experienced don't even look at it. Go back to the landscape, paint a picture that's palatable, doable, manageable. How would you feel? You know, the funny thing is that how I would feel would be, although with much more knowledge, it would probably be very similar to how I felt then. It's just that how I felt then was was without any knowledge about the why, which is to say I felt frustrated and I did feel... Um, hemmed in like limited but in a way that I didn't really understand why and now I do understand why because there's all this stuff that's wanting to come out which is not to say um that it gets all rosy along yeah, the way yeah. like you're saying speaking of these titanic moments um when I feel like you know, I'd hit the iceberg and I was heading down you were just telling me that you too still have those kind of moments totally but you feel a bit more differently over time about how you handle that now is yeah that right? I do and I really do believe this is the growth part as well like when you start to really start seeing yourself and you can you kind of feel like okay this is this is me and I'm in my own skin when you do hit these blocks because to say they won't happen is just not real like that's not mm. even possible but the more I really stay in touch with it, I can actually laugh at myself as a, almost like an observing of myself, you know, mm -hmm. in that moment where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna burst into tears. Maybe I should throw a temper tantrum. Like I get really upset and angry sometimes. Yeah, It's not as frequent for sure, but it does still happen. Sometimes it's over something really stupid like technology or something, which is even outside of, you know, the art area. The so studio. it's it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what mm -hmm. it is. But I think I'm noticing the actual Titanic experience. Hap I'm like, oh my gosh, look, here it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And so yeah, I like can- I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. And then I- <laughs> Something disastrous has happened. And then you're kind of in that in a, Titanic when spiral. When I get down, I'm like, do I like it down here? No. And then I just start laughing at myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was a wild little ride. So I think <laughs> that we just get more comfortable with these unknowns and these blocks and these things that come up. And I think frustration is also a sign of growth. You know, mm. I think that it's one of those when you touch a hot stove, you know, it's like you get burned. It's like, stay away. I think frustration is the same thing. Like, hey, there's something here. Pay attention. You're learning mm -hmm. something and, and, and overwhelm comes in and like all these extra things. And so if I handle myself in the old way, meaning, you know, who I was previously, I would have shut down. I would have been mm -hmm. like, 
oh, I can't cope, I can't do this. And the reality is, if I shut down, is that really the way I want to live in my future self, you know? And so I'm constantly reminding myself, like, what would future Michelle do? I always imagine that she's actually a little more together, a little more <laughs> organized, a little more uh, less chaotic than what it really she's feels like. She's learned a little more. She's learned a little more. So how would yeah. she handle it as opposed yeah. to the one who's going through the trouble or the suffering, you know, even if it's self-imposed. So I think that the uh, the growth cycle that we have is, it's continuous. And I think something, I feel like you've said this, and if you haven't, I'm, I'm sure you've thought it, that it, like it's all workable. Yes. Like you're going to keep going. Yes. I guess is, is the thing. We've talked before about that sense of commitment to it. This titanic feeling this day, this, this, um, stumbling block isn't going to stop me from being an artist you're like oh well I'm going to get over this at some point anyway so why not now that's it that's it and I think when you laugh at yourself that's right so I think for me those moments of those low dips you know are definitely shorter and Mm. um and almost laughable now because it's again I can look at it from an outsider point of view of like here she goes here she goes but I think it's more really noticing the growth and and saying I'm, I'm up for growth i think is for one thing i'm always saying to myself okay i'm up mm-hmm. for it i've gotten this far right yeah and i can't turn back so if i can't turn my back on what i really want i just have to go with it you know keep moving forward but i think we definitely don't take enough time to appreciate the growth we've had mm-hmm. and i think we should celebrate that a little more often i'm super happy that we got to do that you know, with you and your work in origin art and really reflect on it. Because if you yeah. look at the differences in, in what you've experienced, and if I, you know, were to think about all the other artists I can think of, like, there's definitely growth there. And sometimes mm. we think we can accomplish so much in one year. But if we were just to stick with it, we could accomplish so much in a few years, you know, and yeah. I know that doesn't sound very appealing to sexy. people. It doesn't. It doesn't sound <laughs> doesn't sound sexy at all. Give it a few years. You're like, oh, Michelle, I want it now. So do I. I'm pretty sure that's what I said to yes. you 18 months ago. Oh, Michelle, I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. Yeah. We are so impatient. I mean, I hate to use this analogy again, but it's like working out. Like, you know, how long did it take me to put on a little extra weight? Mm. It didn't mm-hmm, happen in mm-hmm. one day. It's not going to come off mm-hmm. in a day. <laughs> so, yeah. We got to be patient with not letting how long it actually takes and almost removing time from the equation, I think. I don't know if you have felt like you've had to kind of take that out of the equation for yourself, Beck, but... I think impatience is one of my (laughs) personality flaws. Like, I am impatient a lot and I think about how impatient I was then when I was really wanting, I was feeling really stuck and feeling like I'd been stuck for so long and I just wanted that get that boulder moving and reflecting on now how I feel now it's kind of similar to what you're saying of how you um bounce back a little quicker over time and a little quicker and a little quicker because I think I do still have moments of feeling very impatient and saying why haven't I worked something out by now or why is it taking so long but I think that now I much more quickly recover from that sense of impatience because I don't think feeling impatient like that, it's not a very useful thing. It doesn't actually throw up new solutions or you just get stuck in that moment of feeling it. It doesn't actually switch your mind on. It's it's more kind of about the past than switching your mind on to what's possible for the future. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's not a positive thought. It doesn't – it's like this – you know, nasty little stew of bad self-doubt of feeling like you've made some wrong choices even, I think. Exactly. Yeah. It's a nasty little, (laughs) it's a nasty little voice that comes with a lot of layers, like the implication that you've failed in some way, you should have been further along than you are now. and, And none of that is helping you do what I think is becoming really obvious from our conversations we both feel is a key part of growing as an artist which is to 
be oriented towards growth, to openness, to possibility, to being unlimited in our consideration of what's available to us and what's possible rather than being really focused down on a particular path. So even feeling like I want, why aren't I there yet? Why, which, you know, we've done a podcast about that. Yeah. We've done an episode called, are we there yet? All of that suggests a path, right or wrong choices, all that kind of thing, rather than what you've talked about, that growth approach is never about, is this right or wrong? It's about how many more kind of multiple paths can this open up for me? What can I do now that's going to open up multiple potential things, multiple views for me? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think one of the things that I really loved about last week, when we can map out a little bit of, hey, this is really where I want to go, like mm. for real. And sometimes it doesn't always look completely clear, but like, I'd love to do this. And I always say like, it's always those things that you're kind of secretly saying to yourself. It's not the stuff that you've written in your nice diary in, you know, that's all pretty. <laughs> it's the stuff that you yearn for. I remember think like specifically, I remember when I first came to Australia from the U.S., I walked into this gallery at the, at the time I was working, I was designing wallpaper and I walked mm -hmm. into this gallery because I had a meeting next door and I just walked in and I remember looking and I wasn't a painter, not even remotely in the thinking about painting, like, yeah, nothing. And I walked in and I was looking at the art in the, in the art gallery and I'm like, oh my gosh, how lucky are they? I had this calling, this pain of like, mm. oh, wow. But it just wasn't even in my radar of something I could do. I was just mm -hmm. so envious that it looked amazing to be able to do that, yeah. like to make something that you actually just want to do. You know, yeah. that was something that I remember thinking of. So when those things come up for you and whatever that looks like, it's different for everyone. That's where we have to kind of, I think, pay attention. Maybe putting a stake in the ground of like, huh, there's something here. I need to follow mm. this thread and really starting to listen to what it will take to follow that thread one little step at a time. And that is the growth. Literally, yeah. that is what growth looks like. For me, it was this th that thought of, wow, amazing. Wouldn't that be amazing to do that? And mm -hmm. it, it still wasn't in my world for a couple years, you know, as far as like me actually having paint in my hand. But when it did connect, I did run, you know, and say, all right, what is this going to look like? So I guess what I'm saying is the growth pattern, if you want to call yeah. it a pattern, it, it doesn't look like what we think it's going to look like. Like a plan, no, like a, a five-step plan I, that you lay out. Yeah, I don't think it looks like that. I think it's a little more mysterious. Yeah. Elusive. Uh, what I'm, <laughs> there's kind of multiple parts that are coming together in my mind around what we've talked about so far and one of the themes of the artist breakthrough blueprint last week was around identity shifts mm -hmm. and i don't know if we all necessarily think i certainly didn't think this when i set out on the path and said i'm going to be an artist i'm going to start painting i'm going to start creating work i didn't think oh and i'm signing up to to become you know like a student of identity shifts or to, you know <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that was part of the package but it kind of is yeah, um, yeah especially as we've talked about when you're the kind of artist who wants to create from a very sincere and genuine place and create things that are expressing something substantive in the world and substantive can mean like just what it means to be human, you know, what, how you see the world, all of those things. But it all ties together. When we talked, when we were saying about learning and really observing how you see the world, if that's the way, if the, that's the path and this is what happens <laughs> when you're working with you, Michelle, and working with this framework, as you start to think, well, in order to progress my art in order to really create something that I feel really satisfied with and which also is so distinctive in the marketplace. I need to really dig deep into how do I see the world? What, what uniqueness 
What unique perspectives do I have? And once you start doing that, you're really exploring your own identity. Yeah. It comes hand in hand. And all of a sudden, you're neck deep in who, who am, am I? I? <laughs> um, who, who is this person maybe at the start of the journey who has had lots of photographs of skies and cloud? Who's that person? And now who is working with these different, entirely different sort of concepts and poetry and and different sort of imagery and colors and and who's she <laughs> what's the relationship and not only coming to terms with that but then understanding that this is something that's going to continue to happen yeah in order to definitely. fulfill your potential yes actually the life of an artist is signing up you know for an identity in flux in a way or maybe more specifically it can feel like as artists when we're talking getting really deep and sincere with each other and talking about the real stuff like we do we can start to wonder if artists as a group seem to be more unstable <laughs> if I can say that <laughs> but um, somehow more in flux as people let's say okay. you know discovering these depths and kind of sensitized to changes that are happening and, and how we see the world but actually, it's probably more the case that people who are like that, who are looking for something deeper, who have a sense of these changes that happen actually in everyone, but people who are more sensitive to that are the ones who become artists. So it's a cause and effect, a chicken and the egg thing. The word that I really connected with what you just said as well is sensitive. You know, that was a lens that I always had was this sensitivity. Mm. And growing up, and this is just me being completely transparent right now, I was always feeling like sensitivity was a bad thing. Like, don't be so sensitive. Yeah. And so I always contained myself and I held back in ways because I didn't want to show people my sensitivity or my deepness and maybe that was too intense for people. You know what I mean? Like there was this containment. Totally. So if you imagine that containment being in a box and that's the the presentation that the world has always had for me but mm -hmm. going through changes in my own art and even actually even as a podcast host even yeah. as a coach who helps other artists you know just literally like doing what I do I've had to really go through my own growth on how I really can take that down how I can be more sensitive how I can be myself in a deep way and be public about that. Yeah. That's a growth state that I'm constantly working through. It does not, it's not a like, okay, I did this one thing and then it's done. It's just constantly, I mean, it's like 50 plus years of baggage people we're talking. <laughs> Do you know what <laughs> I mean? It's a lot of baggage. It's a lot yeah, of baggage. Yeah. Like there's a lot of built up props to hold up what has always been the case. And so part of my experience as an artist and just a human is to say, actually my lens and how I see the world is sensitive. And it's mm -hmm. okay to do that. It's okay to be that and letting myself, you know, grow in that way so that I can become my f full potential to do it any other way. It's not my full potential, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, sorry, that was a little tangent and there. It's not. I'm actually taken by how that sounds so similar to what I was saying at the beginning of our conversation when I look back at when we talked about landscape, mm -hmm. right, and, and how I came into this process originally thinking landscape. And you kind of pushed me a little bit and said, why, why landscape? I said, well, it seemed like echoing what you just said about being sensitive and then kind of shutting down parts that seem like too much. So landscape to me seemed like a language that was contained enough that I could do something with but not show too much, not be <laughs> too much. I'm laughing with you, you know? because here yeah. we are saying we don't want to be too much for the world yeah. and we do this. This is why being an artist, like if our art is us, Mm -hmm. This is why the guards have to come down. This is why yeah. the growth is inevitable, really, yeah. to make the work that you really want to make. And that's why there's so much conflict, I think, 
when we're out of alignment with that. You know, it's not that I think anyone wouldn't love Beck's landscape paintings. I've yeah. seen paintings that she's made that completely are sellable and beautiful and all that stuff. But it doesn't matter if I like them if she's not really happy making them. And that's what yeah. really the- It wasn't fully, and that it wasn't fully, you know, I've sat and looked at some of those and, and I do like them, but there's just something for me that's not in that painting. And by the way, just to say to all our landscape painters, this is nothing to do with it being a yeah, landscape just, or not. Yeah. It's to do with what I was choosing to paint at that time and the kind of limited language that I had chosen for myself because obviously yeah, there's also a million ways to do landscapes and abstract landscapes. But I had kind of narrowed in on a particular set of I keep using the word language that's what it felt like to me like a particular set yeah. of tools uh, yeah. of, of expressions yep. a, a particular box that felt like and again it's so interesting what you talk about about sensitivity as a person and how you kind of shut parts of that down because it feels like not things that other people around you can handle not things that the world can handle and I think in the same way in your art and your expression you can say, okay, I'm going to narrow down to this particular area because my sensitivity to other visual things, to other ways of expressing feels too much than what other people are going to be able to handle or accept about me, let's say. So let me just do this. I think we do this in so many ways. We do this in like our marketing and how we present ourselves to the world, you know, on our curated Instagram, how we talk about ourselves and our art. It's like we have this very secretive, sensitive side. And then you have this limited version that's allowed to show up and yeah, taking the leap to open up that both in the art process and then as a person is can be scary and feel really vulnerable, but so rewarding. Yeah. So rewarding. And I just want to say one thing that stood out in what you were just saying as well is you were saying when you were looking at the landscape for your own work and what that meant, there was stuff mm. missing. And I totally. think that's really the secret to letting that guard down and figuring out, well, what what is missing? What are these pieces that are wanting to be expressed and I haven't figured out how to express them? What what does that look like? And that's really, I think, where, you know, once Beck started looking at that, and I'm just speaking for you right now, but I'm once you started looking mm. at that, the landscape became really less important to what you were interested in as a person because we were really looking at like, well, how does Beck see? What do you actually yes. see? And yeah. that's where it gets really juicy because then it's like, huh, all these other things are here that are even ben beneath the surface. Totally. And when I think about those paintings, um, and I can visualize one now that I still have on my wall, I think it's a lovely painting, but I literally look at it and I recall us having this conversation. I said, you know, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the lines I'm looking at the planes of color the you know it's beautiful I love it there's so much I love about it but it almost feels like the surface of water to me like there's something there I feel like what's missing is there's something beneath behind that that I can't see in that painting so I can totally see you know at some point still having landscape elements you yeah know, I, I still love there are a lot of elements to the to the kind of shape of land and sky that I love but there's something that that's what I'm discovering to kind of pull down that surface layer a little bit and say what belongs in that landscape you know what belongs on that image belongs in that painting that's not there that feels like it would really make my heart sing that would feel really fulfilling and like oh that's it like you said when <laughs> yeah. you walked into the gallery you had that feeling like oh that's it like a real gut feeling yeah 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 and that's that's the, that's this journey we're that's, all on right that's what growth looks <laughs> that's like what that's what we're here for yep yeah messy but good <laughs> <laughs>